the grouchy nerd. All right, you antisocial weirdos, it's time to learn a game that can play at the ideal player count. One. Obsession, designed by Dan Halligan and published by Kayenta Games, is a hand management, worker placement, deck building, tableau builder. Did you get all that? Which sees you as the head of a family, once part of high society, who has fallen into hard times and a poor reputation, seeking to regain your foothold with the movers and shakers of Victorian England. To do so, you'll upgrade your estate, host events, and try to attract fancy guests, all in the hopes of gaining the favor of the Fairchilds, the richest family in town who have two eligible children that you want to try and marry one of your children to, which, I'm told, was not creepy at that time. The game is played over four seasons, each consisting of three standard rounds and one courtship round, and your goal and obsession is to have more points than your rival family by the end of the game. It's basically Downton Abbey the board game. The theme of this game does nothing for me. I've never seen Downton Abbey or, I don't know, The Crown, and the closest I've ever gotten to finishing a Jane Austen book is watching Clueless. So I was initially hesitant to check this one out. Do you want to play Pride and Prejudice the board game? No. But this game is great, it's just dripping with flavor, plus the hand management and worker placement create some nice tension and decision making. There is an extra luck element involved in the solo mode that I know can turn some people off, but I personally think it works in this context. Because Clueless is an adaptation of Emma by Jane Austen. Okay, well I don't know what you know. So put on some classical music and pour yourself a nice cup of tea and let's learn Obsession! Well, is that actual tea? Oh, I meant scotch. Choose your family and take your family board. Each family has a unique family bonus described in the lower corner of your family board. For instance, the Ponsonby family begins with 300 pounds. Your family board is double-sided. The only difference are the colored spaces at the bottom. It's your choice whether to use the side with the colored lines or the side with no lines and this organizer. I personally prefer to save the table space because your tableau is going to get, it might get kind of long. Grab your reputation markers, double-sided tokens with numbers on them, and the one that says max. The 7-8 token can stay in in the box. Place the one token here and the rest close by. Also place your reminder token nearby for now. Set your reputation wheel marker to position 1 unless you're playing as the Cavendish family who begins on position 4. Anytime you gain reputation marked by these lions, you'll move your marker clockwise on the reputation wheel, one space for each lion. When you cross from the 5 to the 1, you'll change your reputation level by flipping or switching to the next number up. But you can lose reputation, and if you move from the 1 back down to the 5, Five, you'll go down a level. Take your staff. Every family begins with a butler, a housekeeper, a valet, a footman, and a lady's maid, though the York family begins with an additional footman. Each family begins with the same five improvement tiles marked with this estate icon on one side and a rose on the other. Set yours in the appropriate spaces of your improvement organizer, rose side down. Improvement tiles come in five categories. Essentials, service, estate, prestige, and sporting. They have a name, an activity, staffing requirement, guest number and type requirement, the favor that you'll gain from hosting that event, the improvement category, and the points that that tile is worth. In general, essentials events tend to be guest focused. Service tiles upgrade or augment servants in your estate. Estate events gain guests to your hand. Prestige events get you reputation and sporting events get you money. Tiles with this symbol don't have an activity to host, they just get added to your estate. For example, other than your starting service tile, Butler's Room, service tiles offer a permanent bonus rather than an activity. There's nothing to host or activate on these tiles. Once you add them to your estate, they're just true now. This is the activity's prestige rating. You may only take the action on the tile if your reputation level, the one on the discs, meets or exceeds that number. You can't just go hosting a formal affair if you're not well respected. <laughs> As if! That's from Emma. I don't think that it is. So you can always do your starting activities and any activities with the prestige rating of 1 because 1 is the lowest. You're starting at the lowest. Sorry. Once an improvement has been used for its activity for the first time, it will flip to the side with the rose on it and return to your estate. You can host the newly revealed activity, but tiles with the rose will not flip back over when hosted. Find your family cards, which have your family's crest, here. Each family is made of a husband, a wife, an heir, and a daughter, though the Asquith family begins with an additional family member. Find the 15 guest cards with this crown symbol, shuffle them, and draw two to add to your family as your starting gentry deck. These aren't family members, they're more like close friends of the family. Sure. Just like Josh. 
Shuffle the objective cards and deal yourself five. Objective cards give you a goal to think about throughout the game. You'll start with five, draw two more, and discard four throughout the game, so you're only going to end up scoring three of them. Set the supply board in your play area. Set one under butler, four footmen, two valets, and two ladies' maids in the servants for hire area. Place the remaining objective cards in their designated area. Set some of the 100 and 500 pound tokens in the center area of the board, but you don't need a ton. The opponent doesn't use any at all, so it's just going to be what you need, so a handful. Shuffle the remaining starter guests in with the casual guests, denoted by one Fleur de Lis, and set them in the area on the board marked with one Fleur de Lis. Find the two Fairchild cards, Charles and Elizabeth, which have a purple border, and set them aside, then shuffle and place the prestige guests, those with two Fleur de Lis. Fleurs de Lis. How do you pluralize French? Guest cards have a portrait and a name, and most have some flavor text. Some have a service requirement. All provide favors which you'll gain when they attend your events. This is how many victory points, or VP, that guest is worth at the end of the game. Some uncouth or dastardly sorts are worth negative points, and might even cost you favor when they attend your events. Like the events you're inviting them to, guests have a prestige rating. Your reputation level must meet or exceed this number for that guest to accept an invitation. Find all the monument improvement tiles and set them aside. Monuments will be the same on both sides, as opposed to sweet tiles, which have a monument on just one side. Sweet with a U, not like sweet. Monuments are a special type of improvement. There's no activity to host. Instead, each monument you add to your estate will grant you one space on your reputation track at the beginning of each subsequent round. When you add a monument to your estate, place your reminder token on your player board to remind yourself to gain that reputation. Place all non-starter, non-monument tiles in the bag, then add the sculpture garden and two other monument tiles of your choice. Return the unused monuments to the box and give the bag a gentle mix. The solo mode uses the standard standard length game, so place the round track board near the supply board with the standard 16 round side up, and place the round marker on space 1. You're always the first player, so you can set the first player marker back in the box. Shuffle the very tiny theme cards and place them in the marked space, and do the same with the very tiny victory point cards. There is an expansion called Upstairs Downstairs, which, among other things, has replacements that are standard mini size cards and not novelty size. Theme cards show one of the categories of improvements. Each season, the card drawn will determine what category of improvement that the Fairchild family valued most, and will be scored and compared to the rival family. VP cards are set aside when earned. They may be kept and counted toward your final score at the end of the game, or discarded at any time for the benefit depicted on the lower half. Gaining money, reputation, a prestige guest, refreshing one worker, hiring one worker other than the underbutler, refreshing the builder's market, have a round where you can buy as many tiles from the market as you can afford, draw a new objective card so you'll end up scoring more than three, or pull one guest out of your discard pile and put it back in your active hand. Place Charles and Elizabeth Fairchild on the round track board. Draw improvement tiles from the bag until you have six differently named tiles that have a prestige rating of one, two, or three. Or is a service tile other than Servant's Hall. If you draw a tile that has a prestige rating higher than three, or a Servant's Hall, or a monument, set it aside for now. If you draw a duplicate of a tile that does qualify, make a stack. When you have your qualifying tiles, place them rows side down in the builder's market in ascending sorting number order from left to right. Small number goes on the left, large number goes on the right. Place the set aside tiles back in the bag and give it another thorough but gentle mix. Last, take the solitaire AI card, the 20 sided die, and choose Choose one of the 12 solitaire opponent cards, which represent the rival family who are also trying to marry their way into the Fairchild family. There are four beginner, four intermediate, and four expert families to go up against. Each has a crest, a base end score, and a grid representing their improvement scores for each courtship round. You're rivals because you both know how it feels to have other people be jealous of you. How many? About how many clueless references do we have here? Okay. Each turn plays thusly. The first two steps, rotate service and check round track, don't really apply on the first round, so we're going to skip those for now and 
come back to them. Host an activity by choosing from your available rooms or outdoor spaces as represented by your improvement tiles and placing it on your player board in the indicated space, along with the worker type indicated on the tile. In this case, one of your footmen, which must come from the available service box. Remember that you can only host activities if your reputation meets the activity's prestige requirement. Invite guests from your hand. The activity will specify how many and of what type. Gentry is the generic term for any guest. Some activities will require family members, or ladies or gentlemen, or Bettys or Baldwins, as they would say in Emma. You know, I think it's a pretty loose adaptation. And yes, this game is very gender normative, but so was Victorian England. Family members and Fairchild children may attend any event regardless of your reputation level. Next, you must provide service. If a guest depicts a worker, you must place that worker type on that guest, and that worker must come from your available service box. And this part is mandatory, so you can only invite the guest or host the party so long as you have the appropriate service to attend to those guests or that event. Housekeepers may fill in for ladies' maids, but only if there are no ladies' maids available. And once the brushing room improvement has been added to your estate, footmen may fill in for valets if no valets are available. Extra footmen, valets, and ladies' maids may be hired from the servants for hire area of the board by using the butler's room as your activity. However, underbutlers are only acquired when you purchase the butler's pantry improvement tile. Underbutlers may fill in for the butler, a footman, or a valet at any time, even if there is a butler, footman, or valet available. Once service has been provided, you'll enjoy the favors of hosting that activity. Favors are provided by the improvement tiles and the guests attending the event. Each type of favor is gained all all at once and in a particular order. First, total all money. Some guests are paupers and actually cost you money rather than allow you to gain it. You must be able to pay for this guest in order to invite them to the event, or the money that you gain from another source in the event must cover that cost. Next, total reputation, indicated by these lions. Each lion will move your reputation marker up one space along the reputation wheel. Remember that if you ever move up from the five to the one, flip or exchange your reputation level token for the next highest number until you reach the max, or seven. However, similar to poppers, inviting and affiliating yourself with certain guests will actually lose you reputation. Cads, gossips, adventurous women, or... Americans? That's yeah, fair. You must be able to move your reputation marker down the appropriate number of lions in order to invite these guests, or that must be covered by reputation you would gain from another guest or the party. So when you trade out those reputation tokens, be sure to keep them close by because you could backslide. Though do note that you can host an event or invite a guest even if your reputation level will dip below their prestige level by the end of that event, just so long as you have it when you initiate it. Next, invite and dismiss gentry. When you gain gentry, they're added directly to your hand. Each single fleur de lis gets you a casual guest drawn from the top of that deck. Two fleurs de lis gets you a prestige guest. This one means draw two casual guests. Choose one to add to your hand and put the other one on the bottom of its deck. And this one allows you to dismiss one of those ne'er-do-wells or freeloaders, removing it from the game. Phew, high society is brutal. When you dismiss a gentry, you may dismiss it from your hand, your discard pile, or a gentry at the current event. But remember, you take each of these favors in order, and reputation and money have already been dealt with, so you couldn't disinvite a guest to avoid taking those penalties, because you've already taken them. Though you cannot dismiss family members, and dismissing is the only optional goal. Just because you can get rid of someone doesn't mean that you have to get rid of someone. Then any favors that don't fall into any of these categories, including gossiping and cards that grant you VP cards. Gossiping, though, or anything that takes reputation away from the rival isn't gonna do anything in solo mode. Though, if you do play the Servants' Hall, you can still place a worker on the Servants' Hall and gain a reputation, you're just not going to take it from the rival. And if you choose to use the Butler's Room, the last favor resolved is gaining new workers from the Servants for Hire area on the board. Remember that you cannot gain the Under Butler with this action. Newly gained workers go into the Expended Service area. When all favors have been collected or paid, you may buy a tile from the Builder's Market. You may buy up to one tile per round, except on the Builder's Holiday or by by discarding a VP card with this icon, but we'll go over that later. The tile cost is above that tile's box in the market 
right? But some tiles have a cost modifier, which will increase or sometimes decrease the cost of that improvement. Spend the required pounds to the central supply and place the purchase tile in the appropriate column with the rows side down. Each tile you add to your estate must be unique. You cannot add duplicate tiles to your estate. When you buy a tile, slide each tile to the right of the newly emptied space, one space to the left. Then draw a tile from the bag and place it in the empty space. If you draw a tile that is a duplicate of a tile already in the market, stack the tiles. Repeat this as many times as you have to until a new tile goes in the market. If ever you purchase a tile that's in a stack, you're only going to take the top one. The rest of the stack is going to stay right where it is. Remember that you may buy tiles whose event has a prestige rating higher than your current reputation. You just can't host that event until your reputation meets that number. But do be careful in doing that. A lot of tiles have a negative score on their starting side, so if you don't have a way to flip that over, it's going to end up hurting you in the end. Once you've purchased a new improvement, or opted not to, clear your board. The workers that attended to the guest and the event move to the expended service box, and your guests go into a discard pile. If it was the first time that you hosted the event on the tile, flip it rows side up and place it back in its appropriate column. If later you host the activity on the rows side, the tile does not flip back to the starting side. However, hybrid tiles do flip each time, and when you clear the board, they'll switch categories each time you use them. Hybrid tiles have, I don't know, maybe daisies? and start on the side with an underline. There may come a time where you find yourself short of funds or friends or your so-called help once the day off and you're not able to host an event. Instead, you may pass. When you pass, refresh all your workers by placing them in the available service box. Take your discard pile back into your active hand and choose to either collect 200 pounds in rent or refresh the builder's market. Also, passing is the only way that you get those discarded gentry back into your active hand so you can invite them to another party. Then take a buy phase as normal. Normal. To refresh the builder's market, set aside all tiles in the middle, but not the reserve, which we'll get to. Draw all new tiles until you have six unique ones stacking duplicates, and set them out in ascending sorting number from left to right. It's just like what you did in the setup, except there's no restrictions on prestige rating or monument or whatever. Place the set aside tiles back in the bag. At any time during your turn, you may perform one of these special actions. Spend two reputation points to gain 100 pounds. Spend three reputation points to refresh one servant, or at a limit of once per round, four reputation points to refresh the market. And for that refreshing of the service, you can do that for as many servants as you want to, but it is going to cost you that three reputation for each one of them. When your turn is over, roll the 20-sided die and refer to the Solitaire Builder's Market AI card to determine the rival family's action. Usually, it's removing a market tile from the game. So if you roll a 9, you'd remove the tile in position 3 in the market from the game, then move each tile to the right of that tile down one space and draw a new improvement tile. Note that the action changes if there's a monument on display in the market. The AI will prioritize getting that monument, and more importantly, keeping you from having it. If the result is 16 through 19, no purchase is made, but the next time you roll the die, you're going to subtract 5 from the result before you check the card. This is going to make sure that you never have two rounds in a row where the AI did not make a purchase. If the result is 20, refresh the market. Then move the round tracker forward one space, and if the marker moved onto a purple space, begin the next round at step one, rotate service. Move all workers forward one space along the service track. So the servants that you used last round will move from the expended service box into the servants' quarters, and then next turn they'll move into the available service box and be available to once again provide service at one of your hosted events. So servants are used, they take the day off, and then you can use them again. I want a day off after every day of work. Check the space of the current round to see if it has a special event. This is also the step where you would gain your reputation earned by monuments, and choose whether or not to activate Servants Hall if you've added it to your estate. Rounds 3 and 9 are village fairs. If you've completed the village fair planning activity on your private study improvement tile, you'll immediately collect 300 pounds and 2 reputation on these rounds, then carry on with the rest of your turn. So if you're unsure what to do in the beginning of the game, using that village fair planning activity is a pretty solid one. Round six is marked with objective cards. On this round, you'll draw two objective cards and add them to your hand of objectives. Round 11 is the builder's holiday. You can buy as many improvement tiles from the market as you can afford. As you buy tiles during this round, move tiles to the left to fill empty spaces, but do not fill the empty spaces between purchases. When you're done making all of your purchases, take out enough tiles from the bag to fill those spaces and arrange them in tile sorting order. Same rules apply if you discard a VP card with this icon. Round 14 is a national holiday, when your social betters look kindly on you.
You may host activities and invite guests whose prestige rating exceeds your reputation, but you have to know they were talking about you afterwards. Yeah, the pate was just underwhelming. But on rounds 4, 8, 12, and 16, things get saucy. These are courtship rounds, and they work pretty differently. First, no service refreshes. Just because you're trying to make googly eyes with one another doesn't mean your maid gets the day off. Draw a theme card. The theme card tells you, a bit late if we're being honest, which type of estate improvement the Fairchild family deemed most important in the season that just passed. You'll compare your total points in that column to the points of that color on the appropriate row of the rival card, each row representing one courtship round. So if, after the first season, the theme card is sporting, you'll check the total points in all of your sporting tiles and compare that to the number in the green space on the first row of your rival's grid. If you've ever played this game with people, or if you plan to, this part, the drawing of the theme card, normally happens at the beginning of the season, so you know which tile type to prioritize, and everyone's kind of vying for the same things. But in the solo mode, we use the Jane Austen variant, which puts it at the end of the season, where you just kind of hope for the best. If your score is higher, choose one Fairchild card to add to your hand and take a VP card. Remember that VP cards can be held or exchanged at any time for their benefit. If the rival's score is higher, give them a face down VP card. On a tie, you each get a VP card, but no one gets a Fairchild. Last, discard one of your objective cards to the bottom of that deck. On future courtship rounds, the first step is going to be finding the Fairchild card either in your discard pile or your hand and adding it back to the round track board, so make sure you use it. This next part is optional. You may use the Builder's Market Reserve in solo play, but you don't have to. After the first courtship round, move all blue service tiles to the service tile reserve and then refill the market as normal. Any service tile drawn for the remainder of the game goes into the reserve rather than filling a spot in the market. And after the second courtship round, you'll do the same with all tiles that have a prestige rating of 1, placing them here. Any tile may be purchased from the reserve, even if it's not on top, for 300 pounds plus or minus that tile's modifier. And tiles in the reserve do not get reset during a builder's market refresh. I personally like playing with the reserve. Later in the game, you're not going to want to have the market be gummed up with service tiles and low prestige tiles, so this gets those out of the way. But that does mean that during the AI turn, when it's going to scrap one of the tiles in the market, it might be much more impactful. It's probably going to get rid of a tile that you really want, but then so do other players. On the final courtship round, you'll draw a theme card, but rather than just score that color, score all improvement colors represented by all four theme cards. If a color was drawn twice, it will score twice. And again, if you win, take a VP card and a Fairchild. And if the rival wins, it gets a VP card, but this time it also gets the Fairchild card for scoring those tasty eight points. To get your score, total all VP on your improvements, even negatives, all VP on cards in your Gentry deck, even negatives, completed objective cards, VP based on your final reputation as seen on page 15 of the rulebook, two VP per servant, regardless of where they are along the track, one VP for every 200 pounds, and of course any VP cards. The rival gets their base score plus any VP cards, as well as the Fairchild card if it won the final courtship. If your score is higher, your family wins and it's all champagne and milk baths from here. If the rival's score is higher, well, you're probably disgraced and have to go live with your aunt's cousin in Australia or something. A tie goes to the player. No, a tie. A tie game. And that's how to play Obsession. Now get off my estate. The Grouchy Nerd. Mm. Now that's good tea. Nice and peaty. The hell does that mean?